why don't we have Brian sort of start the process of walking us through uh, capital items and let's get a sense of uh, um, well the importance of each of them in regards to the town as a whole and moving forward. Brian, do you want to do that or not? Um, I mean, we can talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in terms of, I mean, typically the, fi typically the town has, um, used reserves for, for capital items. Um, so if we're looking for ways to, if we're looking for ways to impact the, the FY21 budget in terms of how that's going to impact people, that's, you know, it won't affect it. Um, what it will do is it'll keep it'll keep reserves in case we need them mm. um, depending on you know wh how it shakes out with um, state. with state aid really I mean as when I was responding to Bobby's question a little bit about about local receipts I mean the town's conservatively estimated those for a number of years now so it's likely that we could keep the estimate the same or similar and, and be okay. Um, but the question is the combination of, of a decrease in state aid, um, the operating, the, the increase of the operating budget, which is, it's really higher than normal. It's, it was like the trifecta that for, for FY21, where we, where we got hit by all, you know, we got increases from all three schools. Um, I don't think that typically happens. Usually, it, at least in terms of frontier, usually it, it rotates between towns. Um, and, um, and we don't know about about um, state assessments. We get state receipts, and we also have state charges that that are on the cherry sheet as well. Um, and all those come together to um, to determine what our total expenses are. You take away the the non property tax revenue and the, that's what your tax levy needs to be. And, you know, really the, the way that we're going to impact what that is would be looking at the town operating budget. Um, so in terms of capital projects, my recommendation on, on the sheet that you guys have is, is I, I think to the extent possible that we can, that we can keep money in reserve um, um, but I also, but I also don't want to, if there are items that, that Jonathan had mentioned this before, um, you know, that we could use for the town to operate in FY21, I, I don't want to, you know, put it, it's not a disadvantage, but I, I want us to continue to operate. Let's put it that way and operate efficiently, um, within reason. Um, so that's why I had my recommendations as to some items that I think we might want to consider. Um, either, either they're going to, there's some cost efficiencies associated with it. It'll cost us more down the road. Um, so, uh, I guess my recommendation isn't sort of a, a blanket ban on capital items. Uh, the majority of them, I think we, it's probably wise to hold off till we have a little more certainty about, oh, you know, about future fiscal years. I, I'm not as pessimistic as Bobby. I don't know if he's still back on the call, but um, <laughs> Waitley is starting this in, in a good place um, in terms of reserves. Yep. Um, but it's not something that we want to spend down right away. Um, there's talk about FY22 being worse than 21. And if that's the case, it's not, it's not prudent to spend down all of our reserves in FY21 if we may need them in 22. Um, so, I mean, on the sheet that's, that, that you guys have, you know, I, it, I think we're going to need more information, you know, in terms of, in terms of the, the need of the excavator. Um, the plan for that was a was a five year municipal lease, so that the 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 fiscal cost in in FY twenty one is is lower. It's not an outright purchase, so it it would be lower. 
and it, it could even go a little bit lower now that um, the state's given us, well, the state gave us additional money for the Williamsburg Road Bridge project. Um, so now we have close to quarters of a million dollars on the project um, and we won't need to spend any chapter 90 money on that. So we could even reduce that 25,000 from free cash, um, make that happen. Um, I see Jim's here. I don't know what, what the timing is for that, for the public, for the, the public safety radio project. Um, those are the two that I, I guess I could see as possibly needing funding in 21. Um, and then there may be some cost savings with the library driveway. I think Keith's plan is still to, for Chestnut Plain Road to be done in the summer, this summer, I think. Um, and I imagine there's, I don't know how much cost savings, but there's some cost savings if all the equipment's there and it's going down the road to, you know, to go up the library driveway and pave that. It's, it's going to be cost that, that we save down the line. Um, and I don't know in terms of, in terms of the wood chipper, I don't know in terms of Keith's operations, how that would impact it. Um, but I think that's my overall sentiment is that I think if, if we can hold off till the fall in terms of capital items until we get a clear picture of where we're going to be, hopefully it's the fall. Um, I think that would be wise. Paul, could I ask, could I ask a question of Keith, please? Please do. Keith, in a world with the excavator, are there parts of the, of the Williamsburg Road project that we could do ourselves where we ordinarily would have to farm it out? And what would be the, the, the cost delta on that? We have to do part of the Williamsburg Road. And because we did not, even with the additional funding, we still don't have the money to do the alternative one portion of the of the bid. So we have to do that ourselves. Um, and I don't have the numbers right there in front of me, but it was it's quite substantial. Um, hang on one second. I thought. Uh, I think Bobby's back. It's yep. I had it written out in the summary of the excavator. Um, yeah, I saw that. Forty-eight thousand dollars worth of excavator work was what was in the bid. Um, that's what that you know. That's what Davenport had in their bid. It certainly wouldn't cost me that much, but. Um, it certainly is a good month's worth of excavator work by the time you do all the different aspects of of the of what needs to be done in there so you know and the and the aspect of us renting an excavator for another month down the road it's another seven thousand dollars yeah seven thousand three hundred dollars is a rental right now on the excavator for what time frame a month I, i'm yeah i i couldn't tell you when it's got to be done sort of in conjunction of when davenport has done what they're <laughs> responsible for doing so more than likely it would be best case scenario sep maybe september october I, I don't know how quick they're gonna get in there we're just getting ready to have our pre-construction meeting with with the contractor so that we can get that rolling. Brian, looking, looking at the uh, capital improvement projects, I guess at the end you added the library driveway and I could see we could get some cost savings there. As far as the, the wood chipper, uh, I guess if the doesn't, wood doesn't, branches don't get shipped, they'll just get piled somewhere somewhere until you do get a wood chipper. It's not like it's gonna affect really anybody. I think rather than that 60,000, I, I would propose that we do the uh, backup generator for the town offices. I mean, that could be a critical need, more so than a wood chipper. Oh, 
one fun. thing that I can throw in in regards to that, you know, we still need to get final approval from Berkshire Gas if they're going to allow that. You know, we're that was those numbers we put together. We had the electrician give us a proposal. I don't have a verification from um, Berkshire Gas yet if they would allow the additional use. We, we're trying to to utilize some of the equipment that's not being used at the center school. Like there was a um, dehumidifier that was not being used. So we were going to try to utilize some of our gas that we, you know, we only have so much gas that the company allows us to use and we can't exceed that. Yeah. So you don't even know if we can do this generator. I'm not positive at this point in time. Um, it's what, that's one of the things that since Mark, you know, had proposed and put the numbers together since COVID-19, I haven't had a chance to, to finalize that. Um, the reason I, the reason I was thinking about not putting it on it, really the driving force behind that would be, would be cold weather and you know, the building not having heat and freezing up. Um, so I thought that would give us some time now that, now that it's getting warmer out and with, with the idea that hopefully we'd have more certainty before the fall. Yeah. Uh, on these <clears throat> projects. Unlikely, but maybe. Well, they got to put a budget some, somehow. I was, I have a tax collector question is how much their receipts are down that are normally paid. And what kind of hit will that be moving forward when she has to borrow money? In 21? Or you have moving, to for, moving forward into next year. You could ask well, her if she's here. <laughs> well, right now things are pretty good. I'm actually pleasantly surprised of the payments I'm receiving. Of course, because the select board extended the deadline to June 1st. Right. Um, I'm not quite, I mean, some of my biggest escrow companies haven't paid yet. Uh, but otherwise, I have been making good collections at this point in time. Um, so like it hasn't, the collections haven't dropped off 50%? Not at this point. Okay. They might be a month behind because of yeah. the change in the date, but they really haven't dropped off. I, I think I think you probably won't see, if this continues, you probably wouldn't see it till into next year. Right. I, I, that would be my guess as well. Uh, are there any, you know, in regards to the capital projects, are there anything that has to be done? Well, that's it. Um, is it what are the must have to be done versus it would be nice to be done? Yeah. yeah. Must haves versus nice to haves. Um, I, I think that has to be that has to be sorted out that. And I think we have to have a number. I think we have yeah. to have a number on the other side on the stabilization and, um, and the free cash side as to what we feel comfortable in allowing um, expenditures on. Um, then try to match that with capital projects that, um, that people want to dig their heels in on. Must have. Um, does the select board have any um, feeling about these capital projects uh, in regards to must have versus nice to have? Well, I, I think I've, I've said my piece here. Let me ask Brian on the, uh, if we go with the proposed ones you have here, you're coming down to either 386 or 310 for free cash remaining. What is our track record for, for free cash every year? Is, you, is it in the 600 range every no, year? No, so no way. No. If you, take, well, if you look at the, four maybe. if we're not going to get any more next year and you look at the, the 310 here, if we're going to use 200,000 like we've traditionally done to lower the tax rate, it's only leaving you 100,000. Yeah, but that's where we've been the last few years. That 200,000, that 386, 178 includes the 200,000 to reduce the tax right. rate. Right, it does. I understand that, but but 
next year you're going to take the 200,000 out of the 386 again if you don't get any additional free cash. Oh, I think we'll, I think we'll get you'll, you'll get more. You yeah. will get more cash. Here, history of free cash every year. I, mean, I don't You're know off the top of my head. I mean, we, it, dep it depends on how much we carry over from the prior year. Um, I don't know, anywhere between maybe 250,000 to 350,000 as a guess. You don't, you don't have a table in here showing the free cash every year. No. It changes every year. Right. Yeah. I understand that. And it's probably going to go down next year, won't it? Won't it you, don't know, you don't know that. But that's you don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> I, sus I suspect this fall it will be like normal, and then the following year it will be significantly reduced. Yeah. Yes, I've done quite a few tax takings, which have which will that money will go should go directly into free cash, um, and with our regular um, amounts that generally go into free cash because we do underestimate our receipts. Even with this, at this point in time, I think we're still going to have a decent free cash for next year. It would be the year after that would be a problem. Yeah, but we're not into the year after yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <ya. laughs> One year at a time, people. Right now. Yeah. So, so Paul, to answer your question, I, I, or Joyce, go ahead. You raised your hand. I apologize. Go ahead. Oh, that, that's okay. Um, I, Paul was talking about must-have versus nice-to-have. Right. Uh, my understanding is the communications is really a must-have. If we don't must do that we kind of don't have communications. Is that, am I understanding that correctly, Brian? Uh, my, I'm remembering discussions from previous meetings, but that seemed like something that the county's going over to, that the, you know, the emergency communication system is changing. And, you know, if we don't change, we don't get to communicate. Oh, I don't. Oh, the, the, uh, the, uh, state, the uh, state price on it. Yeah, this is, this is Jim. <clears throat> um, just to, to touch on that a little bit, um, timeline-wise, it hasn't really changed much since our last um, meeting. We're still looking at probably the end of this year, beginning of next year um, for the police to roll out. It doesn't look like fire is going to be rolling out within this fiscal year. So my concern would be that if we don't do anything – if next year is supposed to be worse, um, that's that's going to be an issue. Um, maybe we can split it this year and do police this year and try to get what we can for fire next year. Um, but I, I definitely think, I mean, our system now is on its last legs. The system is going to be switching over. Um, that's, as far as I know, that's moving forward. We haven't heard anything differently on that issue. And I think from the police perspective, if you look at the radios that, that we're proposing, I think it's just over 10, just over 10,000 with the remainder being uh, for the fire department. Yeah. <clears throat> Is there any way that, and again, I'm throwing a big dart here. I get that. Is there any way if we claimed because of the economic crisis we didn't have the cash that we could go cry poor to Homeland Security for for the to pick up the cost of these items. <laughs> That'd be nice. Yeah, I, that, again, that would be I, real nice. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I'm asking. No, no, we've been we've been crying for the last three years to Homeland Security, to the governor's office, and this is this is kind of where all of our crying has has gotten right, us to right. at this I, point. Yeah, I I get that, but. Again, we're in a new norm. Yeah. I mean, we're in a really new norm. Yeah, and, no, absolutely. And, and I think that it's worth a shot saying, yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to stay afloat. We're trying, to, we're trying to keep basic operations going. We need this communication. We, 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 need, we need security and safe, in public safety. It's time for you guys to step up because otherwise – we're going to be on our own. I agree. I agree. I just, I don't know that the money is going to be there for them to, to give us. 
based on everything else that's going on. Yeah, and plus they're paying for the build out of the system as it is. Yeah, I mean that's 125 million at this point that they've got vested in the project. So I just thought I'd ask. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a valid question, and I'm sure we're going to be kicking and screaming all the way till the end, try to get as much as we can. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question, kind of for Keith. Uh, I know he mentioned the the big uh, use of the excavator for the Williamsburg Road bridges. When do you think you would actually need that equipment, or, or that that work would actually be done this year? In regard to maybe you know, if we don't fund the excavator now, can we do that in uh, <coughs> August, September, later on this year, or is that stuff that's going to be needed? Because I also read your other report showing you what you would do with the excavator uh, instead of renting for various water water department issues other things, maybe some of that can be delayed even even further till the fall, but uh, I guess mostly for the Williamsburg, Road, Williamsburg Road bridges. It, at this point in time, the best I can tell you is it would have, it would, deep, it would be in within this fiscal year that we're talking. If, if for some reason it didn't happen before winter, it would definitely would happen before June of next year. So it's, it would have to be done within this fiscal year. As far as my other projects, um, I've definitely got to do the, all the, the center of town work's got to get done as far as the parking, expanding parking, all that stuff. The paving is going to be done. Sidewalks, we're planning. It's all still got to happen within this, this construction season. Um, so I'm in the position right now where we, you know, as far as, like I had said before, doing the rental, the excavator is, we brought the excavator in, so we're renting it right now. And we're beginning to do the, you know, the work in the center of town that's got to get done. I can't wait. It's got to, you know, these things got to get done. Um, sidewalks are going to get done. My work's got to be done. So I can't just sit around and do nothing. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in there and say that, you know, the town still has to be operational. Um, I, I think if we don't purchase the excavator, it will be a cost to us. You know, this isn't a zero in some game. It will be a cost to us down the road. And, and, and that would be the one thing on this, on this that I think that we need to do now so that we can stay functional and efficient as a town so that we don't start to create money pits where we're all sitting back here in, in two, three, four, five months saying, oh my God, what are we going to do now? I agree with you. I think it, it's, a, it's a well and very good investment because if you don't invest it right now, Keith's going to end up with all these bills of rental and yeah. next year is going to be even worse. Yeah. Keith, would there be any way to renegotiate the contract to try to backload the payments a little more to shift them from this year and next fiscal year? Well, further out? I mean, uh, that would be, you know, I don't, that would be done in the municipal lease. I, I don't know. Yeah, other that's what I'm talking than, about, in the lease. Other than one of the things that I know, um, I, I'd have to ask Brian if he remembers exactly, but I, the water department was going to, you know, make contribution too. Um, and weren't they going to make a contribution of the unused money that was allocated to buy the pickup? Yeah. So, I mean, there's, you know, with, with, with that a contribution and with chapter 90, we may be able to almost get away with no um, capital expense, so to speak, additional capital expense to this, this current year's budget. Okay. That's, because that's we have sort of have money sitting there in the bank, so to speak, with the contribution the water departments provided and looking to con you know contribute and me with chapter 90 we had what was it brian Twenty five thousand originally we had plugged in there for the capital it was going to be 10 for the water 10 from chapter 90 and 25 of free cash but if if we can shuffle some of that with chapter 90 that would be beneficial yes yeah but if we can do this without a 
particularly big hit on the up on this year's budget, that would be great. So I agree. Long term, we don't want to be paying rental fees. No. Endlessly. I, mean, I think this, this year we're in good shape. If we can re if we can readjust it, well, the Fred's oh. idea is a great one. As long as we can get the asset now. Yeah, yeah I mean the other thing you you not that I am proposing this, but you always got to remember with a municipal lease, the way a municipal lease is written is if if let's say two years down the road or three years down the road, finances are even worse. Um, you just walk away from it. Not that I'm, that's, but you don't have to, we're not obligated is what I'm saying. Yeah. Keith, I, I assume this equipment would be used for the Poplar Road Hill? Project. Yes, that's another project that, you know, Poplar Hill is still on schedule to be done this construction season. Um, and so, yes, there's another, you know, you know, and the situation I have right now, as I think everybody knows, is, you know, especially when it comes to setting precast structures, we got a number one using trench boxes now and um, setting precast structures. Our, our old backhoe just doesn't, is not capable of doing that. It was never designed to set trench boxes. Um, and so that's what that's what we're up against. I, I'm dealing with new guidelines from OSHA regulations and our insurance company bought us the trench box. I'd best be using it and not have the insurance company say, how can you're not using it properly? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So with the, the, the Poplar Road, Poplar Hill Road project, I understand Smith College is making a contribution. Will there be money left over from that contribution um, to pay for your equipment? Yeah, you know, maybe, you know, a, a, a portion of that could be allocated to it. Yes, because that's part of the part of my, you know, estimates. Yes. Okay. But um, Keith, just um, I know you have a lot of projects upcoming and a lot of, you know, regarding the capital project expenditures um, for this equipment um, are going towards these projects. Are you going to have to do another 40? I don't know. Are these projects, if you had to, if you had to scratch these projects, could you scratch them? Uh, you know, we're, you know, we already have gotten an extension for the um, complete streets sidewalks um that's got to be done before our um i can do the paving of chestnut plain road but it, they pretty much need to be done simulcast you know hand in hand um simultaneously mm -hmm. as far as you know could i not do poplar hill yeah i can i mean smith college is is making their they're going to reimburse us probably we're hope within 30 days or something like that after we do the paving, they just will not give us the money up front, which I can understand. Um, another situation uh, that I'm not sure where it's at. I don't know if anybody else has any updates is the, um, the Chuck Dachi property, the Kestrel land trust or whatever is that's going to be a huge project that I was asked to, to look into. And obviously that they're looking for a contribution from the towns in kind to get that culvert built for the parking lot. And it's not a simple replacing of the culvert. It's going to, it's a um, considered to have to meet the new current stream crossing standards. And it's going to be sort of like something that was had to be built on Conway road. So it's, it's, there's a lot of these projects that, I'm getting asked to be involved in, and they're going to be expensive if we don't have the equipment. Right. You know that we are looking forward, and granted, this isn't Armageddon. Um, we're not there yet, but yep. if there's a resurgence of this COVID thing, if the stock market falls out of bed and the state doesn't get any revenues from all those collections, <coughs> and in two years we see nothing 
Um, Waitley, if none of those projects were done, Waitley would be the same. Yeah. It's nice to have them. You know, you know what I mean? Uh, it, it's, it's, they're, it, they're important to a point. But if none of them happen, nobody's life's changing an iota in, the, in, in this town. Um, so you want to look at it from that perspective. Um, and of those projects, are there monies that we, that we are receiving that we can't afford not to move forward with? Well, I have to, I've got to do Williamsburg Road. I can't. That's got to, as I said before, that's our portion we've got to do within this fiscal year that we'd be talking in FY21. Christian Lane, you got to do because you're going to lose the money if you don't. Chestnut Plain, you mean? Chestnut Plain. Yeah. yeah. Poplar now, Hill. As far as the as far as the library parking lot, yes, it would be nice to to pave it all at the same time, but yeah, it could wait and just be more expensive at a later time. Yeah. Okay. Right. You know, sadly, the 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 costs aren't static costs they're dynamic costs that are inflationary um so so paul I, i'm gonna i'm gonna respectfully half agree and half disagree with the comment about waitley no one no one would know the difference in terms of our everyday lives i i think that's true to a point but i also think it's 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 looking at it from a very static perspective as opposed to a dynamic perspective and i don't think we're in a position to do that you don't know you don't know that at all you don't know yes, that i do all. Oh, then you. <laughs> There's no way you know that. Well, but but I guess Bobby, I, get, I get what you I get what you're saying, but there's no way you know that. But, it's not but gonna work. right, but then but there's no way to know on either scenario is my point. No, there's so, not. There's not. Right. So we can't make that. We can't make the Sherman S comments. Well, so so what do we want to do? We want to dip our toe in the water and keep moving forward. Yeah. Or you want to pause, put the pause button, and stay where we are. That's the, I guess that's the decision we have to make. Yeah. I, I would say with basic operational tasks, you know, for, for example, the, the Williamsburg Road um, project, you know, we've seen the price escalation when it was out of our control. And we were fortunate that the state stepped in to help us out with that price escalation. If we, on our own, understandably why with, with, with valid reasons delay that project the state is not going to step in again and 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 cover the inflationary costs so i don't think that we should be putting an ironclad freeze on every single town operation i think i think we have to continue to live like there's going to be life in five to ten years not just this year I, you know, I agree with that. In five to ten years, you know, we're going, we're most likely going to be out of this uh, this situation. Um, but I, so, so what what happens with these projects are that um, they 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 generally take on sort of a life of their own, expand, and they 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 expand, and usually with um, you know, good reason. The but they also take on an emotional component that uh, that people latch on to, and because they see the outcome, they 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 can project what life is going to be like with the new project, um, and 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 that's all well and good. Um, but you you, I think we're getting to the point where we can't argue that out. Uh, discuss that out and come to a conclusion. I think instead we need to look at the numbers. We need to look at the free cash numbers and say to ourselves, what, at what level are we, will we feel comfortable in allowing those, uh, uh, um, those accounts to reduce by? And when we get that number, then we apply that number to these projects and then say, okay, 
this one's in, this one's out. But to just kind of kick it back and forth, um, I like this one, I like that one. Uh, I think we've got to just come at it from a number. And that's, that's my feeling. Well, in this kind of situation, I think the ideal should be to preserve cash. Preserve what you have on hand because of the unknown. And I get the part that you want to move forward, but there's six of one and half a dozen of the other. But, Paul, I think the, your, the bottom line is the tax rate, the tax increase. With what's being proposed right now, we've got, what, 92 cents on a dollar increase or $280 in average household. Unacceptable. Uh, that's, that's, that's what's being, what the voters are going to look at. What's it costing me in my pocketbook for this budget? And I think whatever we decide to go with, whether it's the full amount or something less, we have to convince the taxpayers that that's necessary and it's worthwhile to do it today and not postpone it. Well, and, and to see how that affects the tax rate. If you tell them you're only doing half of these, well, you only got a 45 cents increased tax rate. That's more plausible than, than, a, than a 92 cent tax rate. Uh, I think you got to look at how can we sell the program to the voters? They're the ones that are going to approve the budget or the warrant articles on this. And if we go overboard, they're going to say, hell no, we're not getting any money. We're barely living on what we have. And it comes down to the town being in a fiscal position to present something that's realistic. I'm not saying we go with the full 92 cents, but maybe somewhere in between. Well, the town, I mean, taxation is going to, you know, be directly tied to the operational budget. And, you know, we already saw Frontier level funding theirs. I, I would expect the other schools to follow suit. And, um, and we may have to do the same thing with each and every, um, all of the de departments in town. On the capital side, we're looking at the capital as having to preserve some of it in the event of downstream, there be another downturn. So, you know, we got these two dynamics. Um, happening simultaneously and um yeah i hear what you're saying fred and i agree um the operational side um you know we'll have to see brian what do you think of that sorry to jump on you like that <laughs> You want to think about it? I'll ask Keith a question. All right, go ahead. Yeah, I'll think about it. Hey, Keith, uh, your budget has got a 44784 increase. Is 30000 of that uh, rental of the excavator? Yes. So if we go ahead with the purchase of the excavator, you are not – you're going to have like a 147 yeah. increase. That in would – that would go right. That would go goodbye. Correct. Okay. 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 Yeah. That's I, that's what I thought, but I wasn't because I I had to make provisions if I'm going right. to have all these I projects. Understand that. Right. Yeah. Okay. And Tommy, thank you for asking that question because that was sort of my point from before. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, you feel I, I also don't think we we yet have quite enough information to go ahead on. No, you know, we're not making of, any decisions tonight. Oh, right. No. no, okay, no, but just even with the discussion, like, you know, Frontier went to a level budget. We don't know what Franklin Regional <coughs> Tech is going to do, if oh, anything, right. which would be, could be a substantial impact on the budget. And we hear tonight from Keith that there may, may, be, may be able to patch together mm -hmm. other sources to pay at least the first year of the excavator without yeah. going into the free cash. Right. And I think we need to flesh a lot of these things out before we start even making the you know, firm philosophical decision of, you know, going towards spend, you know, more towards Jonathan's approach or more towards an austerity approach. Yeah. We just don't really have enough of the information yet. And I know we're not going to get the state numbers. I'm not even counting those. No. That we'll never get the state numbers. Um, in regards to this, um, 
this, uh, this capital project list, there are four projects on here in, uh, with the elementary school. Now, I, I realize they're not meeting till next week, but that's over $300,000 of uh, capital costs. Um, how does everybody feel about that? We have, um, I mean, are these, are these musts? Um, replace carpets. No. Reconstruct surface parking lot and driveway. Remove skylights and cafeteria. Um, and then the big boy, energy efficiency improvements, boilers, weatherization, uh, those kind of things. That, that was going to be paid for. That's, that's not going to happen. That was, the idea was a green communities grant for that, but that's not happening. Oh, so that's not, so we can take that out. Okay. I, I don't think any of those items are, are priority <coughs> items. Nope. Good. Okay, good. Okay. So kind of, that's just, kind of, that's just me. Kind of what it's boiling down to is the, um, the telecommunications looks like people looks like we kind of need it. People we got to do it. And, um, also it looks like the, um, the excavator kind of looking like we got to go down that road. Yeah. But it's a, it's not 45,000. That's a different number, which right. we have to figure out. Right. Right. Exactly. That's the kind of number we have to figure out what that really is. Yeah. In, Same thing with the in, in our budget. Terms. And I don't think we're going to come to this conclusion this evening, but it would it would really help us all out if everyone would take a look at at the at what's in these cash accounts and what would you like to see hold that we hold on to versus let spending and um, and that's the number. So, um. uh, I've got a question on the capital. What is this? Will be the status of the library? Is that money we must spend this year? Is that no? Or is that we have got to talk to the library and work work through with them? I don't know if we're through with them, but well, no. no I mean, whether they can. Put it off a year, maybe even two. I I don't know what the, yeah, I think what right. their status of any grants or anything is. They don't have any grants. Okay. No. no, this is all coming from us. Okay. Yeah, but that that's a that's a big number in the capital department. The only thing we don't know is this: is there is there any kind of uh, backlash from um, the ADA or the state? We got they're it. not work. They're not working either. <laughs> Neither is OSHA. Yeah, I, d I doubt that ADA compliance in the town of Whateley is going to be the top of their priority. Not priority. No. Okay. It wasn't for 30 years. It's not going to be now. You're probably right. Okay. Um, all right. I'm off my soapbox. Brian, did you want to? Yeah, I mean, in terms of. I mean, for me, the big sticking point is the operating budget and how do we, I mean, we have to move forward with this somehow. Mm -hmm. um, I think capital, you know, we talked about capital projects a lot and I, I think we're all pretty close on the same page on that um, or at least how we, how we solve that. But I mean, the operating budget is how it is going to impact taxpayers. Right. Impact Town operations, and uh, what are we shooting for? Uh, level, level funding. It level funded for level funded for what? From last year to this year, the no increase. No increase in the tax rate. So that's going to the the tax rate's going to fluctuate based on state aid before we set the tax rate. Likely. So we're going to, we're going to vote that, but we're going to vote our town operating budget before we have likely have final numbers on state aid. Isn't so, that crazy? <laughs> it's always crazy. It's always that's been that way though. That's what we always do. Yeah. You know, it's worse we this year. Fund, if we level fund the town operating budget, um, state aid could come in worse than we project. It could come in better than we project. <laughs> um, we, but we can make adjustments 
six months from now. True. Yes. No. Well, some adjustments are easier to make than others, right? It would be really hard to make an adjustment to Frontier, but it's relatively easy for us to make adjustments within our own town and yeah. to some extent the elementary school. Mm-hmm. But you can well, make adjustments up until the tax rate is set, until you submit to, to DOR for the, get approval for the tax rate. Which, which isn't going to be... November, December. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe we'll have a better idea of what, how things are going to be. I don't know. Maybe not. I, I, I think we'll at least have a number from the state, whether they, whether it stays back. throughout the end, of, throughout the fiscal year is another question. But I mean, the tax rate is going to depend on, on total assessed value and new growth that we get from the assessors in October. Um, these projections have an estimate based on what the 10-year average is. Um, so if we're uh, if we're going to assume total assessed value, then you know the tax rate. If everything was the same as last year, but total assessed value went up, the tax rate would go down. All right. Um, so you know, there, there there is some wiggle room there, um, but how much? It will depend. <laughs> what a good answer. <laughs> I, have, I have way, I have a small amount of answers tonight. <laughs> but we knew that was going to be the case. Yeah, we knew that. Yeah. Well, I, I, we're not going to end this meeting with any kind of firm, no. concrete decisions. Decision. But can, right. can we agree that we need to do whatever we can to minimize or eliminate any kind of additional taxation to the residents of this town. I definitely agree. Agreed. I definitely agree. Cause you don't know what's coming down the road. I'd like to say it's going to stay flat, but yeah, I don't feel like that. We hang on to as much of our assets as we can. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. Agree. I agree. What? So what's the message to Franklin Tech and what's the message to Whitley Elementary School? Well, <clears throat> I, I, That's a hot one. I believe that, that we should ask them to follow Frontier's lead. And I think the elementary school will. I think Franklin Tech will be another. Yeah, different. I don't agree with that. Yeah, Joyce? Franklin Tech is also driven by, um, we have more enrollments, right? Yeah. We have a big increase because it's in big enrollments. It's not because... Franklin Tech has just uh, good point. Right. Tuition. Well, they add they added a new program, so I mean it's it's <laughs> right. still they're still moving forward. Right, right, and, and and but it's because our number of students is small, so when we get one extra student going in a year, it looks like a huge increase. Yeah, that's true. Most of that yeah. increase is is enrollment based, so I don't think we can expect Franklin Tech, even if they level fund, our share is not going to be going down by all that much, right? We can't expect that that's going to go down by 55,000. No, 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 I wouldn't think that at all. But, and and I don't know for sure that Frontier or the elementary school would, well, the elementary would be flat, but Frontier Regional, because that is based on enrollments too, that won't be an exact increase of zero. Um, Probably won't be a decrease, but it could be substantially (laughs) smaller than what is there. Um, Gary is just... Were you, were you on when he was? Yes, yes. I don't have those numbers though in front of me. Yeah. Darius said we'd be down thirty seven instead of up fifty five. We were fifty four. We'd be down thirty seven. It's a net plus net of ninety. If yeah, okay. That's pretty good. Why does it do that every year? Hmm? Yeah. Well, they're baiting us. Educate kids. Well, no. Yeah, that ninety is a, a big start towards a flatter budget. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You don't remember there's a capital assessment coming in 22. Yeah. That may be on hold too. <laughs> yeah. Well, not when you're going to be able to borrow money at negative rates. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to do that now. So we should borrow for the operating budget? 
If it, still if, got it to goes any, if it goes any further, it might not be a bad idea. It might not be a bad idea at all right now. Yeah, that's the financial side of it because Rachel going to your money's worth really nothing. Right. Yeah. Um. Okay, Brian. Yeah, we've discussed capital operating general. Um, general climate that we are in. Do you have additional um, pieces that you'd like us to discuss, uh, take a look at of the budget? Um, well, there's one. There's one item of business that we we should talk about a reserve fund transfer for this fiscal year. Um, but before we get on to that, I mean, I guess what, what do we want? What do we want to do next meeting? Um, what do you want from me yeah. for the next meeting? Joyce? Can I um, make a suggestion? Uh, maybe for our next meeting, the goal should be, I mean, it just adding numbers up roughly. Um, if our operating budget is that as proposed is about $250,000 higher than a flat budget, roughly for our operating budget. Could we aim to come back um, with uh, the, well, we already have 90, roughly 90,000 from Frontier um, willing, willing to cut. Um, if the elementary school and the, um, uh, what's that, how's it, the public works budget uh, they're both about 45k over. There's another 90. There's 180 thousand dollars there. Um, if uh, we kept salaries flat, which I know we haven't really discussed, and the personnel committee hasn't met, and not sure that they will really need to. Um, there's another 25. We're getting pretty close to 250 thousand dollars right there, in terms of things that you know uh, reductions in the proposed budget so far. Um, could we come back, um, give Brian the charge to come back with um, uh, the, what, what are the cuts that will get us $250,000 off of this? And I'm going to put the idea out there and people can laugh at it or not, that maybe 200000 is what we should really, that's where we should dig in our heels. We have to cut that much and then really look at what the other things are and decide somewhere in between there uh, because that's the one that really hits the tax rate that we really have to get. Um, I, I think that's the one where we really have to hold the line. Absolutely. Uh, and the capital of course is when we've got reserves, we've got things that we've set aside. Um, there may be some things we can do with, I mean, I was talking to Brian about a couple of different possibilities, but I think Brian needs to hear from us uh, a charge. Hey, come back with what you think will be best for the town if our goal is to take away 250000 And if if he gets a, a really horrible pit in his stomach with 250000 give me the options for 200000 uh, I mean, that's that seems like... And if he feels really good, he can... Let's have the option at 300000 Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so if we say 250,000 plus or minus, knowing that, I mean, a level budget doesn't necessarily guarantee a level tax rate and all kinds of other things are, are only estimates at this point that I think that's the kind of guidance that Brian is looking for. Yeah. I think that's a good start. Um, I would also add to that. Um, I would, I would really like to know if there was a level, but, if there was level funding from last year to this year, what are the hits the departments in town are going to take because of that? Um, so I, th I think that's kind of an, an important view to have. And um, I would also really in encourage Brian to, I know this is, I know you got a lot going on, but, what is the, with regards to the bank accounts, 
what is it, what would be a rational number to hang on to? You know, for the free cash, for stable, and if, and if we move free cash over to stabilization, what do we want to hang on to in case, you know, there's a real problem downstream? So. Yeah. Just, I, I just would, something like go ahead, Fred. I, I guess I, I would like to ask Brian to to go back to unless he's already done this to all the departments and have them look at the budget they submitted and see if they actually need all that money and realizing the the situation we're in and if they can cut some portion of their budget, even if it's a minor amount, all that's going to add up and, and see what the numbers get. And, and just focus on a level budget. If we go below the budget of last year, that's great. And you won't know the impact of the tax rate until you get your, your revenue side of it. That's only part of the equation. I wouldn't necessarily stop at level funding. If we can cut back, departments can cut back on stuff they know they're not gonna do because of the virus or whether it's related to travel or, or activities or programs. Let's have, let's have them reflect that in their budget for this year. You should be talking to the school. You know, we're not cutting some of this back permanently. They could bring it back next year or in the fall time if we know a better picture of what our revenue is. Right. I guess we should look at, at cutting every looking at everybody going back, not just the the four areas that are increasing in their budget. Yeah. Well, I just use those four because they happen to be in front of me, and they're the biggest. Right. The biggest. Yeah. Right. But if, if someone can give, that's a good idea. I mean, sure. why not? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The other, the other thing that I was thinking about, just not to, not to go back to the, to the excavator, but to go back to the excavator, you know, we've got $188,000 in capital stabilization. That money's not going to bail us out of, out of this current crisis. It's sitting there. So we could pay for this year's excavator by pulling from capital stabilization because that's what it's there for. That's exactly not, what it's there for. Not, not when the, we're going to do a capital lease or a construction yeah, lease on this thing. And, you know, we already got it kind of figured out how we're going to pay for it. I wouldn't touch that capital stabilization, not for this project. You think you're going to need $188,000 for the other stuff? You never know. Down the road? Yeah. Yeah, but and I think interest rates are real cheap now. So if you're borrowing your your, your yeah. expenses are gonna Okay, be I, I just Okay. All right. I just Yeah. I just wrote a few things down here, Brian, on the certified free cash. There's six thirty two one seventy eight. We're gonna take two hundred out. We already got it figured in. We're gonna take two hundred out for the tax rate. Yep. Take three hundred of it put it into stabilization, that'll leave 132,178 rolling over into next year's free cash. I personally would be happy with that. I would too. That would work. Yeah. Yep. And, and then my guess is you might see, you might see free cash certified next fall. At, in, in four, free, let's say it's four hundred, three or 400,000. Exactly. That's back right to the back. one from a couple of years ago. We'll that's right. Yeah. That's right. So I think those are good. that's the way you got to look at it, I think. But that's just my personal opinion. It, but I think you also need to look at six months from now when we need these other capital improvements that we're not funding today. What's the additional cost for delaying them? What's it going to be? And I know we're, the education one, it's, it's hard to say because it's a, it's a in, match and it's kind of a, a safety issue. But uh, In six months, Fred, we can revisit this. And if we have to take the money out of stabilization, it's a two-thirds vote at town meeting. We can take the money out if, if we want to or if we have to. We're right. choosing not to. Right. Can we can take it out of stabilization. Time. Stabilization right. or capital stabilization at that point. Yes. If we're funding capital projects. It's, it's, a, it's our bank account. We're trying to hang on to our bank account. Right, but what's the one? Communication is the 21,000. 
I, I guess I, I see that as the highest priority on all that list. Yeah, we're funding that. Yep. No, you're not in your proposal for free cash. You didn't have that in there. Mm -hmm. I thought he did. Yeah. No, no you only took out. No, no I see. I see what Fred's saying. Yeah, I think Fred's right. Is that the only thing? Go through your numbers again. Maybe I didn't hear it correctly. No, I didn't. I did not put it in there. But yeah, okay, because sorry, the, you, sorry, the two hundred thousand we're taking out to balance the tax rate. Right. That's the only money we were taking out of there. Okay. Now, you know, we're talking about taking out. Uh, the only thing we were talking about taking out would be the twenty some odd thousand for the public safety communications. Right. The excavator, we think we can fund it this year on our own. Am I mm -hmm. right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So. From chapter ninety and some others, yeah. Yeah. So we got to come up. We got to find. We'll. You know, then we don't put three hundred thousand in. We put two hundred and fifty, seventy some odd thousand. Two hundred and fifty. How's that? Okay. It sounds better. Yeah. No, you know, we're not making any decisions tonight. We're just throwing ideas around. Yep, I think we're done. I think we have a framework. Um, Brian, you're good for the next meeting. You gotta um Yeah, we gotta make a transfer for Keith here for the to fix the truck. Right. Um reserve all fund transfer. Before all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Oh, um, you got that, Amy? You guys need to do a roll call vote. Oh, come on. Yeah, because no, legally you do. Aye. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Paul, you got to call Hold each on. name. You got to call the roll, Paul. Hold on. Okay, we're going to go. Seniority is everything. Dan? Aye. Okay. Tommy? Aye. James? Aye. Fred? Aye. Bobby? Aye. And I'm there too. Aye. Un unanimous. Okay? Okay. <laughs> we have a date for the next meeting? Brian, when's our next meeting? I don't want to get out of here to look at my calendar. <laughs> I've got the 26th. May 26th. May 26th. Same time, same place. Yeah. Okay. Sort of same place, yeah. Yeah. We, we will not be meeting in the office. We will not. This works well anyway. Everybody good? Any last good. comments, thoughts? Okay. Miss you already. Um, to make a motion, we adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.